Hey guys, Will here. Now today is a very exciting day for Mozza Sim Racing products. You would have seen, we posted up a video just now of the brand new FSR formula style steering wheel with integrated dash. That comes in at 650 US dollars. Now what we're looking at in this video is an entire suite of sim racing products that actually comes in cheaper than that wheel. So you get the pedals, you get the direct drive wheelbase, you get the steering wheel, you get a table clamp, everything you need to get up and racing for just 599 US dollars. So today we're gonna to be taking a quick look at these products. We didn't have time to do a full review like we normally do because these products did just arrive here this morning. So a quick build quality comparison against the Fnatic CSL DD and GTDD Pro as well as the Mozza R9. And then we'll jump straight into the driving experience. And by the end of today's video, you should have a good picture of whether this bundle is for you. So let's dive in. Okay, so as always, quick bit of housekeeping here. Thank you very much to Mozza Racing for sending across these products for us to check out today. Also, thank you to Fnatic as well for sending across their products, which we'll be comparing this to today. Now, if you do decide you wanna pick up any of the products that we've seen in today's video, there will be some links down in the description. And if you are looking at picking up some Mozza Racing gear, we do have a 5% discount code linked down in the description box for you guys as well. So as always, absolutely no creative control, no editorial control from any external party here at all. What we're gonna be talking about today is purely our own impressions, our own observations, and our own conclusions on these products. Now, just one quick note here with regards to compatibility. This is only officially PC compatible. Now, there are some third-party adapters available which can give you console compatibility. Those aren't officially supported by those consoles though. So there's no guarantee, unlike with Fnatic, that those will be supported. A future firmware or software upgrade from Microsoft or Sony could break those at any point. Whereas if you're looking at a Fnatic CSL DD, that is officially Xbox supported if you have an Xbox compatible wheel. And the GTDD Pro is officially licensed for PlayStation and will also work with an Xbox if you have an Xbox compatible wheel attached. So one important point of difference there just to be aware of before we dive deeper. Okay, so let's go through exactly what we're getting here inside this R5 bundle. So starting off with the wheelbase, you can see this little tiny wheelbase actually packs quite a punch. It's a 5.5 Newton meter peak uh, direct drive wheelbase. So if we grab the R9 and put it next to it, let me just move these pedals out of the way quickly here. You can see pretty much identical form factor here, same dimensions in terms of height and width, but quite a bit shallower than you get with the R9. Now the R9 was already a very small wheelbase, which made it really convenient for mounting on your rig, even more so with this. And of course the smaller size and reduction in weight is also gonna make it more suitable for mounting on a table as well. So you don't necessarily need to have a sim racing cockpit to take advantage of this product, which I think is gonna make it appeal to a lot of people. So we'll flash the dimensions for the R5 up on the screen while we talk about the table clamp here. So you can see here a steel construction, nice and solid here, good quality welds, on the internals here too. We've got a 15 degree as I measure it angle that it puts the base on relative to the table surface too. So that makes it nice and convenient for a wide variety of different types of cars. Isn't adjustable in terms of angle. So that is one downside if it bothers you. You can see two millimeter thick steel for the top plate and then five millimeter thick steel for the actual C clamps which bolt onto your desk. Now you might be wondering about the clamps themselves. There's an 80 millimeter gap there, so that will be able to clamp to a table up to 80 millimeters thick. Now if you do have a slight lip on the front of your table as well, you've got a distance between the front edge here and the edge of the little clamp of 23 or 24 millimeters. So if you've got a thick front edge, you will just need to be aware of that. Shouldn't be a problem for too many people, but just one thing to think about there. And you can see some nice sort of foam strips here as well to reduce any vibration. And there's some little rubber pads sitting on the top here as well. And you can see here the exact same mounting pattern as we have on the R9 and the other Mozza Racing wheelbases for that matter. And that also coincides with the Club Sport wheelbase 2.5 and CSL wheelbases from Fnatic as well. So if you have a rig which is compatible with those, you shouldn't have too many problems just bolting this directly on. So before we get stuck into more details on the R5 base, let's take a quick look at the pedals and the wheel that are included as well. So next up we have the ES wheel. So this is an 11 inch wheel, same diameter as the Logitech G920, G923, and the T300 RS from Thrustmaster. Now they say that this is a leather stitched wrap here. Doesn't smell like leather to me. Maybe some sort of a poly material, but yeah, I don't think 
Yeah, I don't think that this is genuine leather. I may be wrong on that one. The marketing material does say leather, but it certainly doesn't hit you in the face with the smell of leather when you open the box, like what you get with a Logitech G920 or G923, for example. And that's something that I've always loved about those wheels for the price point. But what we do get is an aluminium frame here. You can see this is brushed aluminium within the frame here. There's a plastic button box, which the metal rim kind of integrates into. So obviously the button box isn't gonna be compatible with any other rims other than just this one, which is designed for it. But we've got 22 mappable buttons on the front and then of course, two shifter paddles on the back. Now those are aluminum arms on these, but they feel pretty much exactly the same as the Fnatic WRC wheel, for example, the BMW with the cheaper BMW wheel. So they are spring loaded with a little mechanical momentary switch. And you can see really about a centimeter of travel there. They do have quite a squishy feel. You can see once I've activated the shift, there is quite a bit of squish there. So they're certainly nowhere near the quality that you get with some of the other Mozza racing wheels on the market. But again, when you consider the price here, this is pretty much what I expected. What I am very impressed with though for the price is the fact that we're getting the exact same quality quick release that we get with the more expensive wheels. This is actually identical to the one that you get on the FSR wheel, which costs $650 US just for the wheel. So as you would have seen me elaborate on in our Mozza R9 and other Mozza racing reviews, this is my favorite quick release from an OEM in the sim racing space at present at least. There are some other aftermarket quick releases which are just as good. And of course, SimMagic and uh, Imsource do use a pretty much identical quick release as well based on the NRG racing design from the real world. But the things that I really love about this is it's nice and solid. There's very minimal flex in it. It's very easy to operate as well. You can operate it one-handed and it's just a really, really clever design. And I don't think anybody would disagree that this is a fundamentally superior quick release to what you get with the simplified quick release on Fnatic's cheaper wheels. And then flipping back around to the front again, we also do have a 10 LED rev strip across the top here as well. So let's jump over now and take a look at the SRP light pedals. Now we haven't done our full review of the SRP pedals just yet. We have been running them on our test rig for quite some time. Not super, super thrilled with those so far, I would say. And these are a step down again from those, not in terms of build quality overall. You'll see these have steel pedal pads rather than the brushed aluminum pedal pads that we get with the SRP pedals. What these are emitting though compared to the SRP pedals and the CRP pedals for that matter is those have a hybrid system which utilizes a Hall effect sensor as well as a potentiometer to determine the pedal position. Now, what's happening here is you're purely just relying on the Hall effect sensor without the potentiometer. Whether that has an impact on the driving experience, obviously we'll comment on later on, but the brake is not a load cell. It's purely just relying on the Hall effect sensor to measure the pedal's position rather than the force that's being applied to the pedal. So the same kind of idea as what you get with the more entry level Logitech pedals or thrust master pedals, fundamentally a position-based system, unlike the force-based system that you get with a load cell or pressure-based system that you get with hydraulic pedals. So the R5 package comes with a throttle and brake. There is also a clutch upgrade available too. So again, steel construction pretty much throughout here. You can see if we flip it up, you can move the pedals either further away or closer together, depending on your personal preference. And you can actually detach these completely from the heel plate and mount them independently on your rig or even invert them if you wish to do so that way as well. So if we flip them over, you can see a very simple basic design, very similar to Fanatec CSL pedals. And you'll also notice on the bottom here, there are some anti-slip pads as well. So you can use these pedals on carpet without too many issues. So I'm gonna set the pedals and the wheel aside now and let's have a more detailed look at this R5 wheelbase. So let's do a bit of a side-by-side -side comparison now here in terms of build quality and features before we dive in and do some driving tests. So we've got the Mozza R9, the Mozza R5, we've got the Fnatic CSL DD and the Fnatic GT DD Pro here in front of us. Now just to reiterate again in terms of compatibility because this is very important, the Fnatic GT DD Pro is PC and PlayStation compatible out of the box. So it has the PlayStation security chip actually built into the base itself. If you attach an Xbox compatible wheel, you then have the trifecta Xbox, PlayStation and PC compatibility. Now with the CSL DD, you have PC compatibility out of the box, no PlayStation security chip. If you attach an Xbox wheel though, you do have officially licensed Xbox compatibility. So that is important to distinguish between those two. And of course, in comparison with the Mozza products. So both of these are only PC compatible. As I mentioned before, there are some aftermarket adapters available although compatibility there isn't necessarily guaranteed. And that is an important distinction between a product which is officially licensed versus a product that can work or unofficially will work with consoles. So just bear that in mind. But look, in terms of overall build quality, let's first compare between the R9 and the R5. And I'm happy to report here that literally the only difference between these two is just a slightly different design on the motor shaft assembly itself or the hub 
and just the overall form factor being a lot slimmer than we have with the R9. All the materials throughout are all exactly the same. We've got an aluminium housing here with a plastic back. So we've got our pedal connection, we've got our dash connection, and that's another product that we need to review soon as well. We've got our USB connection, and then our power connection here for our DC power pack, which looks like this, so a relatively small brick. And that is rated to 96 watts or eight amps at 12 volts DC for those who may be wondering. And it is a switch mode power supply as well. So you don't need to worry about having a converter or inverter or anything like that. We'll work on anything from AC 100 volts through to 240 volts. So that is that. We've got the same two little holes as the R9 for mounting our dash. One other thing I did notice here is the comparison between the pads on the front of the shaft here. You can see this has got an additional two contacts for connecting through the wheel. So comparing quickly across to the Fnatic products, look very similar in terms of overall build quality and materials used. When we had a look inside the R9 wheelbase, it was quite similar in terms of the quality of the circuitry and things like that internally as well. So there was no sort of, I guess, distinct point of difference there between the two. The thing that does of course stand out, and we already alluded to this earlier on when we were talking about the wheel, is just the quality of the quick release that you get with these compared to the CSL DD and GT DD Pro. So not only is there quite a lot more flex in the quick release with these, guys than there is with the Mozza products, but we also have seen a recurring issue. We haven't experienced this ourselves, but quite a number of people have had an issue with the quick release stem here actually slipping loose and coming unplugged from the base. Now, if you have a look at our GTDD Pro and CSL DD review videos, you'll see this locking collar can be undone, and there's actually a little USB-C connection internally in the motor shaft, and that's going to allow Fnatic to retain compatibility both with the QR1 system, which is what they're including by default on these bases at the time of making this video, but also their future QR2 system. So that unfortunately has created a bit of a point of weakness here. And what may happen is while you're driving, this can work its way loose and your wheel ends up disconnecting from the game. You have to loosen it off, tighten it all back up. And of course that will ruin your race every single time. And again, I haven't actually experienced this personally, but I have had quite a number of people message me and say that it happened to them. And if you have a look on Reddit and various forums, you'll see quite a few occurrences of it as well. So that is definitely one significant area of improvement for the CSL. LDD and GTDD Pro, which isn't an issue on the Mozza R9 and Mozza R5. So I would say in terms of overall build quality with that factored in as well, I do preference the Mozza bases over the Fnatic CSL ones. But that said, if I was looking at buying one of these products for console use, I would definitely go with the CSL DD for Xbox or the GTDD Pro for PlayStation compatibility, just to have that officially licensed product, which you know is guaranteed to work under all circumstances. Unlike the no guarantees experience that you're gonna have with the Mozza Racing products. So I just quickly pop the back cover off here just to have a super quick look inside and just confirm that the build quality is all okay in here and on par with what we had with the Mozza R9 when we did our detailed closer look there. So yeah, absolutely nothing jumping out here in terms of problems. You can see the braking resistor on the side here, the STM32 processor sitting there. There's the little Bluetooth module for connecting through to the mobile app, which you will see in detail in our Mozza R9 review. And otherwise all pretty straightforward. You can see our RJ connections here, USB connection and Molex connection for power power delivery circuitry up on the side here and there's a little hall effect sensor in the back here which is a 15-bit resolution which means about 37,000 points of resolution throughout the rotation of the wheelbase. Now while we're speaking about rotation as well if we just put them side by side again quickly here one thing that I was interested to see is whether there was any difference in the feeling of rotating mass between the two with this obviously being a weaker motor. Now I'm not going to comment on notchiness or anything like that until we get up and driving with the motor energized because obviously the anti-torque ripple circuitry isn't active when the base isn't turned on. But yeah, they actually feel pretty much identical between the two there. There's not really a discernible difference in terms of the rotating mass between them at all, which is interesting. So I would expect from this that they should feel pretty similar in terms of their characteristics, purely just down to the 5.5 Newton meter peak that we get with the R5 compared to the R9. But let's jump over onto the rig now and see what it's like to drive with the R5, the new wheel and pedals. Okay, so all up and running on the rig now. I'm gonna give you a super quick tour of the Mozza Pit House software, just so you have a basic understanding of what you can do here. If you wanna see more detail on all of this, check out our R9 wheelbase review. We have a dedicated video where we went through every single single tiny little thing about this software and what you can do. So definitely check that out if you're interested. But just to give you a top level view here, we can see the steering wheel here shows the rotation in real time, shows button presses as well. So you can see how everything interfaces, all nice and clean. You can see it's a pretty clean layout overall. Everything's well presented and it looks very clean and professional. We've got a adjustment here for our maximum force feedback intensity. You can also see the pedals showing up down here as well. An adjustment for our maximum steering angle, remembering again that a direct drive wheelbase can rotate in 
infinitely. So this gives us a, well, mechanically infinitely at least anyway. And what it does is it creates a soft or software-based bump stop at the end depending on the sensitivity that you set. So in the case of the R5, we can wind it all the way down to 90 degrees or all the way up to 2000 degrees. So if you're playing truck simulators and such like, then that is perfectly fine with this wheelbase too. I'm gonna to set that back to 540 for now. And if we go down to the wheelbase tab here, we've got a basic settings tab. This allows us to make the basic adjustments to our force feedback, more granular stuff that we can adjust here. So things like natural inertia, mechanical friction, things that influence the overall feeling of the steering and how it connects to the vehicle. And these are the kinds of things that you're likely to wanna to change depending on what car that you're running. So it is great that we're able to save and import settings down here too. So if you have a particular car that you've got set up perfectly, you can save that, set it up differently for a different car and then re-import those settings or share them with your friends as well. And then we also have a really interesting force feedback equalizer here too. So this allows us to adjust certain amplitudes at certain different frequencies, depending on how we like the feeling of our steering too. This is something we haven't seen from any other brands at least yet. And I initially thought this was gonna be a bit of a gimmick, but it actually did turn out to be quite useful. So very cool there. There. And then if we go down to these other tabs on the left hand side here we've got our settings for the steering wheel you can see some adjustments here for how the rpm gauge operates and then moving down we can see our pedal curve adjustment we've got adjustments for our dash if we have one of those and then firmware update and so forth but again check out our r9 dedicated video if you are interested in more nitty-gritty detail on exactly how pit house works let's talk about ergonomics and first impressions with the wheel and wheelbase now the first thing that jumped out at me immediately with this wheelbase is just how smooth it is through its rotation. Now the marketing messaging that they sent me, one of the things that they called out was the amount of effort that they've gone into remove any sense of torque ripple or any sort of granular feel in the steering as you rotate it. And I've got to say, and, I, and I'm not exaggerating here, this is on par with the smoothest wheelbases that I've ever felt. I would go as far as to say that this is as smooth as my Semi Cube 2 Ultimate wheelbase, which is a massive, massive, massive achievement when you consider the uh, price delta between the two. So yeah, there's absolutely no hint of cogging or ripple or any sort of granular feel at all. That has an absolutely perfectly smooth feel to it, which is very, very impressive. And I, I, I will not point out here as well, that it is noticeably smoother than the CSLDD and GTDD Pro 2. Those do have a very, very slight underpinning granular feel to them. And you, you know, it's not something that you notice when you're driving, but this is very, very, very smooth. And if I compare this to something like a SimMagic M10 from a couple of years ago, and you'll remember back then, that was regarded as a groundbreaking device because it was bringing direct drive to a much cheaper price point than we'd ever seen before. This is just absolutely leagues above that in terms of the smoothness here. Other thing that I noticed immediately here as well is that there's absolutely minimal flex in the steering wheel too. So you can see no movement there in the quick release at all to speak of. Now, obviously there will be manufacturing tolerances there, so the experience may vary slightly, but if you compare that to say a Fnatic GT DD Pro with the plastic simplified quick release, you can see how much flex that has compared to something like this. So absolutely no comparison there. In my opinion, at least this is absolutely leagues ahead of the Fnatic equivalent wheelbases at this price point. So ergonomically as well, the wheel is very comfortable, feels nice and thick in your hands, good grips as well. Everything that you need to reach is nice and comfortable too. So down to the pedals now, and they have a nice solid feeling to them. There's not excessive play from side to side or anything like that. They feel nice and mechanically sound. The throttle and the clutch feel absolutely fine. So there's a good amount of travel there and the pedal slides relatively easily underneath my boot there too. A lot of people will be playing in socks and that's absolutely fine too. But if you are wearing boots, no issues there whatsoever to speak of. The clutch doesn't have that sort of two stage or bite point mechanical feel to it. So it is purely just a linear press from minimum to maximum. Look, honestly, when it comes to clutch pedals, I'm really indifferent. I don't really care. As long as it allows me to activate and deactivate the clutch, I'm really not that fussy. Where I am fussy though, is on a brake pedal. And unfortunately, this brake pedal does fall short for me. Now we obviously do need to take the price point into consideration here. These are cheap pedals. And you know, I'm, I'm happy to see that there's a high build quality here despite that low price. But what I don't like about the brake is that it's basically identical to the clutch pedal. It's a linear, action to it. There's no sort of progression in the feeling and there's no sort of clearly defined threshold point there on the pedal either. So when you're braking, you want to sort of be able to hit a threshold where you can hit that point consistently and then modulate around that point to modulate your braking pressure or trail brake out as you enter the apex of the corner. With this brake, it is purely just position based. There's no sort of mechanical tactile feedback in the pedal at all to let you know where you are. So that's an initial impression at least, but let's see how this all translates now 
into the overall driving experience. Okay, so let's talk about the experience using the R5 bundle. We'll break it down into the wheel, the base, and the pedals, starting with the base. So there's a couple of observations that I have here with regards to comparisons with some other products that are on the market. So I think there'll be a lot of people that'll be looking at getting something like this from, you know, as a step up from maybe a Logitech or an entry level Thrustmaster wheel. And look, the first things that are gonna jump out to you about this are firstly, I think, and this is something we haven't mentioned up until this point, but the operation is pretty much entirely silent with this. You are not gonna hear it when it's operating, particularly if you've got headphones on, you're not gonna hear a sound at all, which is a massive difference from some of those old belt or cog-driven wheelbases, particularly something like the Logitech G923 or G920. Anybody that's owned one of those or used one of those would know it sounds like a jackhammer operating, which rules it out a lot of the time if you're wanting to sim race with somebody trying to sleep next door or trying to study or you know something like that so that in itself i think is reason enough to consider something like this either as an upgrade or as your first setup now the second thing that's going to jump out to you about this is just how smooth the force feedback feels right from the moment you power it up before you even jump in the game it just feels absolutely liquid smooth there's no hint of cogging or torque ripple or any sort of grainy or textured feel at all it really does feel absolutely completely smooth which honestly surprised me for a wheelbase of this price and you know going back and looking at something like the sim magic m10 from just a couple of years ago now this is such a massive improvement over that in terms of smoothness but what also impressed me is that we don't appear to be sacrificing much in terms of fidelity and that fine detail in the force feedback to achieve that smoothness either so really really impressed with the quality of the force feedback here as well it was consistent across all the different sim titles that we tested it with as well and we did test it with all the major sim titles that are on the market at least at this point in time didn't have to do too much fiddling around with settings between different cars and different sims to get things feeling good but of course you do have the option to jump into the pit house software or the mobile app to make fine tuning adjustments should you wish to do so but really 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 impressed with this wheelbase so i guess the other big question that people will have is 5.5 newton meters enough now this is purely just going to be a matter of perspective i think you know if this is your first wheelbase setup and you've never experienced something like a more powerful direct drive wheelbase then you're probably going to be satisfied with this honestly the r9 is more where i would want to be uh, i generally have my daily driver rig which is capable of over 30 newton meters set to about 10 to 14 newton meters and that is more than enough for me anything more than that and it just starts to get to the point where you know i mean i'm being overpowered and the car is driving me rather than me driving the car so i guess the best way to summarize my feelings there is that the power levels that are available on this base with the fidelity and the smoothness that we have with this base is more than enough to be fast and consistent. I think if you're just really after that next level of immersion, that's really where you may be wanting to look at upgrading to something that's slightly more powerful. But as a first setup here, I think you're going to be absolutely blown away by this wheelbase. And look, the wheel itself as well, I, there's really not a whole lot to add over just what we saw in the hardware overview. Ergonomically, it's really great. The shifters obviously aren't as good as what we get with something that's more expensive, but for the price point, it's really good but I think the thing that really impresses me about what they've done here is that they haven't cut corners in the areas that impact the driving experience directly. So things like, you know, there isn't a whole lot of flex in the wheel. In fact, it's one of the most solid wheels I think I've ever tested, to be honest with you guys. That's partly because of the small diameter, but also just the way it's been designed with everything integrated. So yeah, it's nice and solid. It doesn't feel like a cheap wheel at all to use. The buttons feel quite nice as well. Obviously they don't have quite the same feel to them as we get with the more expensive wheels. But again, I think that's gonna be a compromise that people are gonna be willing to make given the fact that the overall driving experience is so good with this so you know obviously it is a step down in quality overall but not something that i think people are going to be upset by given the price point now one important point here with the r5 base with regards to wheels is that the larger diameter wheel you use the more underpowered the wheelbase is going to feel now at this point in time at least the r5 base is only compatible with the es wheel and the uh, fsr wheel that we also released a review on today so i wasn't able to test it with their 320 millimeter wheels i'm not 100 percent clear yet on whether there will 
will be compatibility for those other wheels later on down the track. But we'll update you guys in the comments below as well as on our written article to keep you up to date on that one. But the larger diameter wheel that you use with this, obviously the more leverage you're gonna have and the weaker the force feedback is gonna feel overall. So just be aware of that as well. Now, because of the design of this wheel, you can't really just sort of add a larger rim to this existing button plate without some pretty serious modification either. But of course, that said, you can buy a hub which will allow you to attach any rim that you want and then obviously connect any buttons that you have via USB directly to the PC. But overall, I've got to say an absolutely fantastic experience for the money with both the wheel and the wheelbase. And honestly, it has surpassed my expectations. So let's move on to the pedals now. And this is where I was a little bit underwhelmed, I've got to admit. Now, of course, we do have to make sure that we're looking at this in the proper context given the price point here. But the thing that was really lacking for me was really just the brake pedal. So there just isn't that progressive feel in the brake. There isn't a clearly defined threshold point that allows you to modulate your braking pressure positively or negatively around that pressure point. So what I found I was doing was calibrating the pedal and just braking to 100% on the pedal and then trail braking away from that. And I could train my mind around that, but it certainly wasn't gonna allow me to modulate into positive pressure past that point because there's obviously nowhere to go on the pedal past 100% pressure there. So I did find that even after a good number of hours of driving here, I just wasn't anywhere near as fast or consistent as I am with the regular pedals that I run on my daily driver rig. Now, that said, the pedals that I run on my daily driver rig are many times more expensive than this entire setup that we're looking at today. But I think that the small addition of some sort of a polyurethane insert or some sort of elastoma just to give you a more progressive feel in the pedal is really what's lacking here. And if I compare these pedals directly against something like the uh, CSL pedals from Fnatic, I do think that they fall a little bit short there. Now, of course, it is important to consider that these pedals are designed to be able to be used on carpet. So obviously, they do need to be a little bit less stiff than what we may be used to reviewing here at Boosted Media. So obviously they do need to account for that in the design as well, but definitely feel like that would be the first thing that I'd be upgrading on this setup. So I'm sure that it won't be long before we see some aftermarket modifications for these pedals to significantly improve the feeling there. So I, 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 I'm really hanging out for that because you know I was very disappointed with the brake pedal, but everything else in this bundle, I was absolutely blown away with for the price. So I guess the big question here is, is it worth buying individual Individual components to better suit your needs? Is it better to just buy an R9 on its own, buy the wheel that you want and buy the pedals? And of course, yes, that is absolutely true. The R9 is a better wheelbase with more fidelity and more strength than this is. Uh, there are better wheels available than this and obviously there's better pedals available than this too. But when you consider the price point that this comes in at, it's pretty darn remarkable. So I've got to say overall, with the exception of the brake pedal, I'm honestly blown away by the quality of what we have here in front of us, particularly when you consider the price. And I'm sure that if you do decide to pick one of these up either as an upgrade or as your first setup, you're gonna be absolutely satisfied with the experience. So I really hope that today's video has helped you out. If it has, please do leave a thumbs up. And remember, of course, we do have that 5% discount code available down in the description below, as well as our affiliate link, which is an awesome way to help support our work here at Boosted Media. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and we will see you again very soon. Bye.